once again. Mike Barnacle captured this weekend really well in a new piece for the Daily Beast entitled An Independence Day Wish for the Disunited States of America. In it, Mike writes this. I thought about a man standing in the shadow of Mount Rushmore Friday night, seemingly intent on provoking a 21st century civil war. Division is his dream. Duplicity is his principal tool as he feasts on resentment while knowingly provoking bitterness within those who may feel left out or left behind in a land where a whole class of citizens is frightened and anxious, thinking economic security, their very future, their children's future, is being stolen by the other, by them. An enemy, the man in the shadow of four of our greatest presidents, is eager, willing, and very ready to exploit and aggravate. Mike goes on, right now in this divided, exhausted, angry, self-doubting, and not so aptly named United States of America, we are in a moment that must not be missed. Now is our time to think and remember not so much who we are, but who we really want to be. And in order to make our mark on this singularly unique moment, we must show up in November to make sure that the man who stood at the foot of Mount Rushmore and in front of the Lincoln Memorial is sent into the shadows of history humiliated by defeat and the knowledge that Americans want something he cannot deliver, an end to the race war, the class divisions, the constant fear of a virus, a shattered economy, incompetence, corruption, and the premeditated cruelty of a fraud who stole our 4th of July and is trying to steal our country too. Mike Barnacle writing there for the Daily Beast. Uh, Mike, I'll let you expand on your piece there, but Joe Biden, if you listen to him over the weekend, offering a different view of the country with the subtext, as you write of, do you really want to do this for four more years? Do you really want this kind of division in the country? You know, Willie, this is all so depressing. I mean, we began this hour talking about the hopefully the reemergence of baseball and other sports to provide people with some something to watch, something to relieve themselves of the day-to-day -day pressures of worrying about the virus, the economy, their families' futures. And here we're talking about back-to-back -back speeches delivered by the President of the United States Friday night and Saturday that are as dark and as doomed as anything I have ever heard. And you wonder, does he know what this country is all about? This is a big, big country. It's filled with flaws. Our history is filled with flaws, mistakes, and failures. Uh, there's no way around it. But the way to go forward is, I don't think, to listen to this man, the portrayal of this country that's in his mind. And Michael Steele, in listening to him Friday night and Saturday night, all I could think of is, at some point in the future, historians will look at this period, they will look at this man, and they will have no other choice but to study the effect of what happened here. How could we have done this to this country, putting this man in charge at this tragic time when there's so much to deal with that he is unable to deal with? Well, first off, Mike, I, I just kudos to your piece. Um, very powerful, and folks should really uh, take to heart uh, the words, not just that as they were read by Willie, but uh, what you say in this piece really gets to the core of the answer uh, to your question. Uh, when you stop and you really pull back a little bit and you think about uh, how the country has moved uh, since 2000, since the Bush v. Gore election, where it really became this sort of, uh, you know, all-in war against our neighbor, um, how we pr began to perceive our politics, how we began to perceive each other. Um, over that 20-year period, we've just watched an escalation of resentments, an escalation of fear, an escalation of, of political uh, chicanery that sort of manipulated the system. And what Trump did was, was really reach down into that and, and pulled out of that, uh, that anger, frustration, and gave voice to it. Uh, and so that's how he could stand in front of those four great presidents and say what he said, because he knows there's there are a lot of Americans in which he still is that avatar of white resentment, that avatar for white grievance, that avatar that speaks about that that slippage 
of what they perceive America to be. To what Yamish was saying earlier in her reporting, uh, that how that we're looking at this as a rethinking of American history. What we're witnessing is not a rethinking of American history, but an explosion of exposure to what American history really is. That's why people sat down and watched Hamilton. They saw it not just reimagined uh, by a, a minority cast, but actually getting a sense of how these pieces fit together. Um, and Americans are trying to find a way, Mike, uh, to reconcile all of that, which is why what we heard Biden say versus what Trump say offers such a stark contrast of not just the history of this country, uh, but this, its future. And the question is, what future do you want? Do you want a future where you're mired in recrimination and distrust and suspicion of your neighbor, or and and a, you know a glass, grasping onto a history that really didn't happen <laughs> the way you imagined it, or do you want something that's different, that's more honest and more true, so that we can move forward as a country, recognizing, as Yamish noted, uh, that original stain, that original sin of slavery, uh, and all that's come from that and how we walk together into that future. And so right now, this avatar that the president presents is one that he's hoping, going back to the point I made in the last hour, Willie, that there's a silent number of Americans who mm. agree with him more than we know. And that's what he's counting on come November. Thanks for checking out MSNBC on YouTube and make sure you subscribe to stay up to date on the day's biggest stories. And you can click on any of the videos around us to watch more for Morning Joe and MSNBC. Thanks so much for watching.